I spent nearly two weeks with the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra, comparing it to past Galaxy smartwatches. So far, it's a significantly better experience than the last generation models, but that also applies to the more affordable Galaxy Watch 7. The Galaxy Watch Ultra mirrors Apple's most premium offering, with upgrades like the third quick button, a siren, and a 3000 nit display. But despite all the similarities, the Galaxy Watch Ultra is not a carbon copy of the Apple Watch, thankfully. Samsung kept its circular design identity intact and offers much better battery life. Plus, you can't even argue about the Ultra branding because Samsung has used it for nearly two decades now. However, there's an issue I see with the Galaxy Watch Ultra that I think the company is failing to see. Samsung isn't competing with Apple, which gets away with high price tags, but with its own previous models and the expectations they set. People accepted the $450 Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and the $400 Galaxy Watch 6 Classic because the extra cost felt justified at the time. But with the Galaxy Watch Ultra, some improvements are very niche, while the notable three-day battery life can be found in the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro for $200 less. Anyway, that's enough preamble and market analysis, because only you can decide if you can afford the Galaxy Watch Ultra or not, so I'll just focus specifically on what makes it a great watch, and how it fares against the best Android smartwatches in the market. The Galaxy Watch Ultra retails for $649 and is available in white, silver, and black, with three band options, namely Marine, Trail, and Peak Form. The Nylon Trail Band is light and most comfortable, but absorbs sweat. The Elastomer Marine Band repels water and is ideal for swimming, but feels heavier, while the Rubber Peak Form Band is a sporty middle ground option. Samsung designed the Watch Ultra to look better in person than in photos. All you can see from afar is a chunky square, but in person, the shiny metallic contours and buttons, rounded edges, and raised bezel looks very attractive and distinct from any other smartwatch I've worn. Without a band, the device weighs 60.5 grams, comparable to the 47mm Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, but heavier than the Watch 5 Pro. Unlike the classic, most of that extra weight is more squircle aesthetics, not the function of a rotating bezel. It's worth noting that the Galaxy Watch Ultra is chunky. Samsung claims it's 12.1 millimeters thick, but it's closer to 16 millimeters with the health sensor lump. Using it for sleep tracking might be uncomfortable, pushing into your wrist unless you sleep on one specific side. Some people with a large wrist may not find the watch to be overly bulky, and while it feels heavier while typing away at my desk, it's not noticeable when out and about. A friend of mine who wears an Apple Watch Series 9 tried the Galaxy Watch Ultra and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 on either wrist. She preferred the Galaxy Watch Ultra's design and the fit of the marine band over Apple's trail band, which she found top-heavy. Although I find the marine band too thick and would prefer the thinner nylon option, it proportionally matches the Galaxy Watch Ultra's bulk, making it appear less oversized, but I prefer the trail or peak form bands for a softer and more breathable fit. What makes the Galaxy Watch Ultra niche is its rugged design, which is tailored for extreme conditions. All Samsung watches are military certified, meaning they should survive if dropped on the floor, However, Samsung specifically tested the Durable Ultra for high and low temperatures, altitude, humidity, immersion, and other extreme conditions. It can handle elevations up to 29,527 feet, although it only functions properly within temperatures of minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. Samsung also promises 10 ATM water resistance, meaning it can keep out water up to 100 meters, making it safe for swimming in both salty and chlorinated water. The quick button, placed between the home and back buttons, opens Samsung Health exercises by default, but can be customized for other functions and also triggers an 85 decibel siren for emergencies if you hold it down for a few seconds. During workouts, it allows you to pause activity instantly without having to swipe with sweaty fingers, which is convenient for runners. However, Samsung missed an opportunity by not adding crown functionality to the quick button. 
Without the physical bezel of the Watch 6 Classic, you're fully reliant on swipes to navigate, which can be inconvenient. The Galaxy Watch Ultra shares the same 1.5-inch display with a 480 by 480 resolution as the 47mm Galaxy Watch 7, but with a much brighter 3000 nits of display brightness. This extra brightness is great in direct sunlight, and the sapphire glass and elevated bezel protect against scratches. Samsung could have made the Ultra display larger to further justify the higher price, but the weight is already substantial, and maybe future models will differentiate the Ultra even further. But for now, the familiar design of the Galaxy Watch Ultra appeals to longtime Galaxy smartwatch fans. Hardware-wise, both the Watch 7 and the Watch Ultra are almost identical, featuring the Exynos W1000 chip, doubled the storage of last year's models, dual-band GPS, and improved heart rate data. I'm glad Samsung didn't keep these new perks exclusive to try and upsell us, but that does mean that the Ultra doesn't have that many exclusives, besides extra battery life and built-in LTE cellular through your carrier. Notably, the Galaxy Watch Ultra lasts about 40 to 45 hours with always on display, which is less than the promised 60 hours, but still impressive nonetheless. It used only 15% battery over two hours of workout time, which is decent for most athletes. My Galaxy Watch 5 Pro consistently lasted longer, partly due to the Ultra's brighter display and more powerful CPU. The Watch Ultra comes with 10 watts fast charging, which gives you 100% in about two hours, but I do wonder if Samsung could have squeezed a few more battery capacity into this thick watch. Moving on, Samsung tripled the LEDs in the Galaxy Watch Ultra for better workout accuracy and added dual-band GPS for improved location tracking. In my tests, it performed well against a Garmin watch for GPS and heart rate accuracy, although it struggled slightly at one instance when running an anaerobic track workout at a near-max heart rate. Sleep tracking with the Galaxy Watch Ultra compared favorably to my Ultra Human Ring Air, showing similar results for various metrics. However, the BIA sensor still seems inaccurate compared to other devices. The 44mm Galaxy Watch 7 also offers similar features to the Galaxy Watch Ultra, minus the extra durability, battery life, and brightness. It weighs and costs about half as much, and is 2.5mm thinner. Other Android watches like the OnePlus Watch 2 and the Tick Watch Pro 5 also offer long battery life at a lower cost, but these two have their own drawbacks. So considering the points, you should buy the Galaxy Watch Ultra if better battery life is your priority, you want a new smartwatch that'll last years to come, or you prefer the new design and form factor over the Watch 7 or the Watch 6 Classic. However, you should look away if you're attached to the classic look and the rotating bezel controls, you prefer a lighter smartwatch experience, or you simply can't afford the Ultra for what it offers. In conclusion, the Galaxy Watch Ultra is a great smartwatch that offers all necessary hardware upgrades, making it powerful and reliable. While serious athletes might prefer other brands, the Ultra strikes a balance between casual and serious users in an intriguing way. If you can look past its high price, the Galaxy Watch Ultra is a great device that made nearly all of the hardware upgrades I'd have hoped for in a flagship smartwatch. I just wish Samsung had given it a working crown and a little more battery to work with, but it's still a great option for anyone that can afford it. With that said, let us know what you think about the Galaxy Watch Ultra in the comment section below. Feel free to ask questions about anything you need clarity and I'll try to respond to all your queries. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this, turn on post notification, and I'll see you guys on the next one.